What you're looking at is a young, very inexperienced golden eagle. He's been in captivity his entire life, so he's never flown more than the flight pen that he was held in. And now what he's doing is slope soaring, which is where birds of prey ride the updraft coming up the side of that hill, gives them lift. It's like a surfer riding a wave. But I want you to pay attention to what he's doing. His tail is is kind of jerking all over the place. He's trying to figure out how to soar and how to steer. But notice that he's losing ground every time he makes a turn. The key point here is look how he's holding his wings. They're in a downward arcing kind of foil like. They're not flat or turned upwards. And that's a key point. And what I'd like to do is show you, we'll compare his flight to an, an adult. Now here he is. You can see that downward looking um, angle. Here's an adult. Wings are up, primaries are out. Here he is again with that downward look. And now an adult bird that knows how to soar looks way more relaxed in the air. Same eagle, once again, trying to come off a hill. Notice that when he comes in, he's a little shaky. This is the first time he's ever actually dove at anything. You can see he gets a little out of control and has to throw his legs out. Here it is in slow motion. You can see what he's doing. He's going too fast, he feels, and throws his legs out to almost stall in the air. So what my wife's going to do is she's going to go in and transfer the bird, transfer it from the lure or at some point from a live, a live kill that it's made and get it up on his fist. And the way you do that is you offer food to the eagle and it transfers over, it steps up on the fist. And keep in mind that falconry is a fairly simple sport. Fat birds fly away, hungry birds come back. And so we have to regulate this bird's food intake because if he gets too fat, he's not gonna need us, he's gonna fly away. And if he does that prematurely, that could be a death sentence really. So we have to regulate his food intake. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the problem or the concern of habituation. A lot of people think that if you train a bird in the sport of falconry, it's going to become imprinted on you, become imprinted on people in general, and that goes against the purpose of getting a bird back in the wild. Well, we found with golden eagles that simply isn't true. Golden eagles are extremely perceptive of individual people. For instance, the bird my wife's working with is tolerant of my wife and has a comfortable relationship with her. But if I was to walk up there, that bird goes crazy, doesn't like me, knows that I'm not going to provide it with anything that it wants, and so it just doesn't tolerate it. So the idea that a, that a bird in, in this program or in falconry is be, going to become habituated is simply not true. And the other thing to keep in mind is in the hands of a skilled falconer, they can take the eagle in a direction to where it's going to be more of a falconry bird or less of a falconry bird. And a skilled falconer can walk that line. You can keep the bird dependent on you just enough to get it to come back, but not totally dependent on you where it's forming bonds and relationships. And that's important because you have to have the skill as a falconer to recognize when to not go forward with any kind of personal relationship and just walk that line to keep that bird its wild side going. And so I, I think that's very important to understand. The other thing is, again, the lure is the principal callback unit instrument. We want, it, we want to have it come back to the lure. We don't want it looking at people for food. So the food is on the lure and then obviously when it's transferred over, food appears on the glove, but it's not coming to the people. Lure training is really the basis of all the training that we do. It's the way we call the birds back. And you can see they really get excited about it. Eagles love the lure. The purpose for these long flights to the lure are obvious. We want to build condition. And more so, we also want to build confidence in flying out over flat ground. Because that's how eagles go to find thermals. We don't know really how they find the thermals. We think they may see the rising air, rising dust, but they find them.
Here's a female golden eagle, and she'll show you um, a great example of how eagles need to go find a thermal. And thermals don't just occur everywhere. They occur in certain conditions where there's rising air, like an invisible tornado. But eagles have to be in condition to go find them. And sometimes it takes a mile or two before they catch one. And more importantly, they have to mentally be confident that they can fly out over this flat ground and find what they're looking for. It takes a lot. Young golden eagles are very reluctant to do that because if they run out of gas, they're going to have to land out in the middle of that field and they're going to have to walk up the hill. And they don't want to do that. You can see that our eagle has found a thermal. In fact, she has a friend, a raven, circling with her. And you can see immediately the difference between thermal soaring and slope soaring. And thermal soaring is probably as important as learning to hunt because you can be a great hunter, but if you don't know how to soar and find food, it's not going to do you much good. So this is an incredibly important skill that can't be duplicated on a creance or in a flight pen. It has to be done out in the wild with the eagle being trained. And if they can do this for a couple hours, they're good to go because they cover a lot of ground. And you can see how she's working the thermal flapping her wings to stay with it as the air is circling. It's an incredibly um, important skill for the survival of any young golden eagle. Golden eagles are supreme aerial predators. If you look right in the middle of the screen, there's a pin dot coming at you. That's a female golden eagle coming into the lure. She's coming in at incredible speed. Then she does a barrel roll, drops her landing gear, and pounces on the lure. They're an amazing, amazing predator. It takes a lot of condition and confidence to do what they need to do. Look at this, 6,444 feet. That's amazing. Well, to put the finishing touches on any eagle, it has to know how to hunt. And in order to hunt properly, it has to be in great condition. Here you can see our female golden eagle is hunting cooperatively with our dogs and they flush a jackrabbit, which she actually goes in and catches. But you can see the amount of conditioning and confidence an eagle needs. This bird is supremely conditioned, but nevertheless, she's not like a wild golden eagle. If she was in the wild, she would up that conditioning level another couple of notches.